to Open Talk. Today we will meet with a smart lady who has goal to realize the research capability and drive innovation that will impact the transformation of Thailand and its surrounding region. We will open talk about National Data Platform for AI or Artificial Intelligence. Let's join us to welcome Assistant Professor Dr. Arathai Sanghet, Vice President of Research and Strategy at CMKL University. Yeah. Very good today. Thank you. How, how are you? Good, good. So now let's start. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah, okay. more than ready. <laughs> okay. Let's start with your background and why you joined CMKL. Okay, so um, actually my background is come from computer engineering. So um, I have been studying in, you know, computer engineering for um, through my bachelor, master, and PhD. Um, we get started on CMKL like uh, three years ago. I think the story is pretty interesting in a, in a sense that um, when I came back here, um, because I have spent a lot of time in US and um, I got a chance to work a little bit in Silicon Valley as well before I came back here. So when I came back here, I am a faculty at KMITL. So, and we see many things that really interesting in a sense that um, we get a chance to teach like a Thai students, which, you know, in a bachelor's uh, degrees, mm -hmm. and they have a, a different cultures and different um, like way to learn from what I got because I, I got my bachelor in, in Carnegie Mellon. So, um, and then when, when we start doing that, we see it's like, yeah, actually those students, they have a lot of potential. Um, it's just up to us, right? We are faculties, we are teachers, right? How are we going to boom them, give them opportunities in a way that, you know, they can grow, right? I go, right? So I think a lot of things is coming from environment and um, how, you know, we nurture them, right? So I think that is really, really important. Um, so if we get, you know, a good raw material, how we push them in, right? In a way that they, they can grow and then can, you know, uh, become a successful person. So when, when we got to that, we was like, yeah, we want to bring in a lot of things that we learn and we see at Carnegie Mellon and give it to students, but it's not that straightforward, right? Let's say we, we, we start like, you know, me and Dr. Akalit, like, and um, Dr. A as well, we were thinking that, yeah, if we want to do like, you know, any curriculum that really similar to what I did at my undergrad, or even, you know, I got in Carnegie Mellon, can we just do that, right? And it turns out it's really, really hard, given the regulations, the Thai regulations that have go around it. Um, we try different ways, but it didn't work. Um, so we have to modify things. If we start modifying stuff, the one that we want to take upon, right? Like we want to be like Carnegie Mellon, we have to take it in, right? But if you start modifying it until like it looks like us, like whatever we have in Thailand, there's no point of doing it. So um, then, and then we got really lucky um, to to meet like a Dr. Tira Giet. Back then, he's a um, uh, the minister of education, and and see he see the vision, he see the the you know what we want to do. And, and he really supported. So back then he helped us, you know, um, push out the new laws, like, you know, back then it's under like a more CDC kind of laws. So, um, yeah, so so we got that, like CMKL founded under that law so that we can, you know, use the exact curriculum or even how we do things um, like at Carnegie Mellon here in Thailand, because it's very important, not just curriculum. Um, if you look at the uh, um, education, actually there are graduate students and R&D, right? So those activities actually um, help form um, the strengths of or even the, the, you know, strength in terms of curriculum or how well the student will work. Because 
if you really participate and do the VR R&D, especially with the industries, students will have um, a lot of experience and faculty have a lot of experience to that what we learn, right? And then we can teach them not just what in the book, but what we learn, right? From doing the real work. So, so I think that is very important. So that's why we I'm so, we're so excited that um, we were part of it. We're trying to found this CMKL as a new university. So it's a collaboration between KMATL and Carnegie Mellon Universities. So we got like two both strong parents, like, you know, Carnegie Mellon is very strong in AI, like, you know, the father of AI is like, used to be there too, and it starts in 1960s, right? And right now they are number one in AI, and KMHL is the biggest engineering school in Thailand too. So by combine both of them and become us like CMKL um, universities, it, it's really, um, a really interesting uh, starting point, right, to, to move forward. And, um, and we are our own university, so we have flexibilities to uh, moving forward, be really fast and, you know, um, be flexible to serve uh, industries and even, you know, serve our students so that they are ready to go out and be, you know, a good workers or add into the society, right, in whatever ways. Mm. Okay, that that's interesting. So you are the key part of the group that drive the foundation of CMKL, right? And yes. uh, this is the the way that you try to combine the best of both worlds, both the AI and engineering from Carnegie Mellon and KMITL also, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Dr. Go, how do you foresee Thailand AI market in the next couple of years as compared to global market and and more AI adoption trends in which industries? So when I look at AI, I think it's very um, opportunistic landscape for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, because AI, if you look at it, most of it composed of a lot of algorithms, model and data is different from the ELA when we are building chips, right? When we're building chips, we need like really advanced and expensive infrastructure um, to just build one okay so that is was that was a very uh, big barrier for us to you know compete with anyone if you want to go back and say oh i want to be like um, you know a big chip uh, manufacturers right i would say oh you're gonna need a lot of investment right but now we are in the era of data how to really um, you know utilize all those data how you apply you know if you look at the data, there's a lot of it. And you, me, as a human, we cannot process it. We have a limited amount of, you know, nerves in our head to just process it, right? And uh, we need to sleep too. So uh, we cannot run 24 seven. So that's why I think like coming to AI, right? How can we mimic artificial intelligence? Because AI is artificial intelligence, right? That's how it stands for. So how can we, you know, learn from those data and take advantage out of it, how to make it complement or even help us do our whatever work we do better, right? So I think if you look at that, I think I think it's very good landscape in terms of if you wanna, you know, setting up, stand up and wanna compete with the rest of the world, I think we got a chance, okay? Because you don't really need like a billion infrastructure to be there. Right. Um, all you need is that you have to nurture our people, right? Younger generations, mm -hmm. and even us. Oh, you know, um, most of the model is come from we thinking about it, right? So, and um, the other part is data, and mm -hmm. I think people right now they are saying data is gold mine, right? And it's true, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it can be gold mine. Or it can be stone mine, okay? <laughs> if you are not really take a benefit out of it. So if you just let it still like sit on the storage, technically it costs you more than it actually benefit you, right? So you need to have algorithm and things like that to go and, and mine it, right? Mine the value out of it. So this is one of you know of the things that we are thinking that now we got a chance because every one of us and even our industries. Uh, we all produce data, okay? But we choose 
as on the industry that we are strong and we have advantage over the others, right? Look at US. Um, I don't think they do a good agriculture because given that geographically or, you know, um, that land is not, you know, our soil is so good. We just throw it in, thing will grow up, right? But over there, they try a lot of things to grow something up, right? And um, even our healthcare systems is very good compared to the rest. OK, and it's not that expensive either. And um, given the healthcare, people are different. Um, whatever we take or whatever model they learn from the Western world, I'm sure we cannot fully 100% uh, apply on B, right? Because rest, why we are different. So mm -hmm. I think that is our opp opportunities to grow. Um, yeah, so we have our own data. If we have the brightest people to work on it and have a support on all side with the government and the um, private sector, I think we, we can do we can do it very well. But um, yeah, we have to do it together. Yeah. So given the trends here, so I think the if you look at the industry, so I think like a healthcare logistic one, you know, right now because the goods still have to travel by cars or by boat or by train, right? We cannot walk it yet, okay? That is still <laughs> not moving. So logistics is still important. If you look at um, the way uh, where that Thailand is located, I think we got a good location to distribute all, you know, all the goods and products. So I think that that's one of the things that we should, um, you know, take advantage of and, um, yeah, those, those data and how to make it more efficient. You know, um, even China, they have to go to us, right, to go down to other countries. Mm -hmm. So so that's why I think if we, if we know what is our strength and if we can make those logistic network to be more efficient, right, by using those data to benefit us, I think it would, we would go a really long way in terms of being the logistic hub here in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Okay, so you see, you foresee the good opportunity for Thailand, right, to be the center of this region in terms of the logistic and also the healthcare, and you you feel that uh, Thailand can compete globally, uh -huh. yeah. but we need like good people, good data, and good machine, right? Also, oh, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Doctor Ko. What's the key challenge in AI development in Thailand? I think I see two big barriers. Um, one of them is um, people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people and um, in terms of, when I say people, meaning that, you know, the younger generations, like the students, researchers, or even like faculties, right? Um, one, one of that is because they don't have opportunities in terms of they don't have data. They don't have a good machines to run what they think is good, right? So if you go back to what is really available um, today, right? Like if you look at the, uh, I think GPT-3, that's, uh, it was released by uh, OpenAI. That is the, um, I don't know, the uh, languages kind of model. Um, it can, you know, write uh, an article that sounds like, you know, sometimes some people cannot distinguish whether this article was written by uh, real people or uh -huh. in, in the machine, right? So this is by the machine. So it get even that, you know, that good. So if you take a look at those model, it's big. It has like, a, I think one, 40 billion parameters. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just use your um, GPU card that you play games to just run those things. Um, it wouldn't hold. And um, if you look at the number of um, the data point that it get through those model, mm -hmm. um, you know, those model we still have to learn from uh, the, the previous point of data. It's just like we learn, right? Like before we are here today, we used to be baby. We learn things, right? In yes. our brain, so and we keep those information. So similar things, right? Those model get learned by looking so many data points, right? And we talk about here like a billions of data points, okay? Mm -hmm. So given that time, like back then, the reason that it actually AI has been here for a long, long time, like I said, in 1960s, but 
it just boom right now because we have the faster machine like it gets cheaper it gets faster so instead of waiting for months now we can waiting for days or sometimes waiting for days it can be in a in the order of seconds right so those make things possible but you can see even though it's more possible it's still expensive anyway so uh -huh. you can see only big companies they be able to push those kind of you know realistic kind of model right otherwise you just you know have only a simple card the gpu card that you have like you know that you can afford it in terms of like a ten thousand like tens of thousand baht right or hundreds of thousand baht that's the one that you can afford but it's still too small um to hold or even learn like a you know millions or billions of data points there so i think this one of the you know uh barriers so you know people cannot really practice their skill or cannot really try right what's good in their head because they don't have data and they don't have a good machine to run mm -hmm. so if you look at the data right now the open data that's available is like uh, i think image is one of the the data set that is big like 14 billion images but it released by you know big company again right so when you do that let's imagine um i was i used to be a student right I don't care whose data that is. I just want to try what I think, right? I'm going to try how my model is working. Is it good? Oh. Can beat other people? Is it? I, I can increase accuracy, right? That's all I care, right? Mm -hmm. So I put my effort, my intelligence, and everything into just working on that data set, right? Uh -huh. The one that benefit is those company, right? The one that put out. So uh -huh. they have a lot of like brightest people come and compete, right? But you know they're winning too so i think that's one of the things that we don't really see a lot in thailand like open data mm -hmm. the one that is big enough not like you know we're not talking about like a thousand images two thousand images those mm -hmm. more like you know, you're playing with it you are mm -hmm. not really you know want to make it and use it for real right for the realistic um scenarios you have to include a lot of data. You have to test it on like, you know, a different circumstance, different, uh, you know, situations. So that 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 is why um, we are not really going that far. Right. So um, so I think this is two of the challenges here. Like the one is, uh, you know, the data mm -hmm. and um, the second one is uh, infrastructure itself. Um, where or what um, kind of machine I can, you know, train my model, test my model, and given, you know, a big realistic data set that I have. So, so I think that is very important. Yeah, so I really wish that, you know, we have that. So that that's why it's coming to the projects, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let, let's talk know. about that project. Uh, we heard about the key initiative of CMKL. Uh, about the Apex Goliath solutions. Is it the mechanism to drive AI and what the strong yeah. point? Yeah, so um, when, when we talk about, like I said, there's a barriers, right? And we want to see Thailand can fully adopt AI or even use AI technologies to benefit um, their businesses, right? That's the end of the day. So if they can support businesses, people will will get benefit out of it. So when we, I think we are we were really lucky to get support from Ministry uh, of uh, uh, Science, um, Higher Education, and Innovation. So um, they support us uh, in terms of you know investing in this infrastructure. So it's um, AI oriented. I would say that uh, infrastructure. So it's composed of a lot of um, GPU, powerful two GPU based, powerful mm -hmm. machines and a very fast storage to, you know, feed in all the data. So I think it should be the fastest here in Thailand right now and uh, probably in these um, ASEAN um, regions as well. So um, for this one, um, for APEX, we name it as an APEX for those uh, infrastructure. So, you know, right now it's capable of um, pushing to 30 petaflops um, per second and um, you know right now we have like a multiple nodes as well to uh -huh. really use to compute the data so for the people that are not familiar with those units right um, the more flops or the more the higher higher numbers meaning uh -huh. that you will go faster yeah yes. 
So and um, Theta Fob is like do S zero Theta is like a you S zero for fifteen zeros in it. Mm -hmm. So that's how big it is. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that infrastructure will enable the students, um, even researchers, to get a hands on something that you know it's. I, I'm telling you, it's expensive, right? But it will um, give you an opportunity to see if you want to build something real, right? The model that have a lot of parameters that wouldn't fit in a small car, or you want to train the models with billions or millions of data points, right? Normally, it would take you what days, weeks. Um, we used to train the data with uh, uh, the, the, the CPU card that we have, like at the gaming card. Um, only like a 3,000 or 4,000 images with the augmentation and things like that. It can take us um, a day or a day and a half. Uh -huh. That only 3,000, 4,000 images, right? Uh -huh. But think about it. That is not enough. We have like um, 100,000. We have millions of images that we have to go through. Uh -huh. So we cannot wait for that kind of turnaround time, right? And if it turns out that, oh, the model is not good yet. so. One week has been gone and we <laughs> have to start over, right? So I think this machine will make a really difference um, in terms of, you know, training. We can get the result faster and it can train on the bigger, larger um, data set so that we can see how really how realistic it is um, if you want to deploy this thing um, in, in the real situation, right? So that is our um, project. So APEC is uh, our infrastructure, and um, we will have um, you know engineers, researchers, and scientists to take a look at that uh, infrastructure as, as well to work on the research to push the system performance out of it as much as possible. Because this infrastructure is government invested. <laughs> They invest in that one, and it's a shared infrastructure. We want to squeeze out all the, all the performance out of it, and you want to, you know, give um, people opportunities to get a chance to run on it. And um, if you look at the higher up uh, layer, which is the software layer, uh, we call it Goliath. Goliath here will help, uh, you know, try to simplify how you train those models. Um, because we believe that if we can simplify stuff that, you know, uh, how you even put model or certain model um, or calculate certain statistic, right? Um, we can even, you know, package it, make it better. Instead of knowing all those code, certain thing we might be able to simplify it and you can just click on it, right? So mm -hmm. that will um, give more people yeah, in terms of you know, abilities or accessibilities to people that they may not have a strong background in terms of coding, but certain thing they have an idea and they're going to try it on, right? As long as it's something that's common, we will try to make it simpler for you. So then more people can try their ideas, right? So, so that's what we want. And um, we see this combining between infrastructure and you know the software layers. We hope that we can help expand the AI communities in Thailand. Um, if we can build more people, more people can try and see how it works, right? Give it the big machine here. We hope that they will see whether how it will help their business, right? And how it's going to shine in terms of business opportunities or how it can help different industries, right? So I think that is very important. Um, when they can try, it sort of reduce the risk of investment, right? Because you cannot ask anyone to invest like millions and they don't even know what they're going to get and they don't even know whether it's going to fail or not, right? And how well it's going to work. So I think that is a good way to start. And once people start trying things, they will see, oh, if you, you know, let's say if the model is big enough and the data set is big enough, they try it and the turnaround time is get shorter, right? So time mm -hmm. to market gets shorter. So I think that that will help speed up uh, in terms of, you know, uh, industries or even private sector to see the opportunities in terms of, you know, applying AI into that work, right? And then I hope that later on um, we will have more, um, put more effort and more uh, investment to develop uh, this kind of work. Mm, okay, uh, it's good to know that you have good machine and uh, the Apex Golight solutions is consists of the 
the hardware part, which is a super high performance, right? Yes. Uh, machine and also the software part that makes uh, it simple to use, right? And yeah. you you also provide a kind of playground for for many students, not only CMKL, right? You yeah. open for other universities and also the corporates to join force as a community. That was a very good initiative. And um, and less time waiting means getting more work done also, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ko, in terms of collaboration, how can technology company help to support you? Definitely, because we see this thing as an ecosystem, right? This one we just, you know, initiated. This is just a starting point. Mm -hmm. What we want to see is that, you know, later on we can create ecosystems that industries can, you know, develop or even collaborate with the universities to develop something that matters, mm -hmm. matters in, in into their business, right? So, and if you look at that ecosystem is not just the one that think about model. There's a one that has to provide infrastructure as well. As you can see, infrastructure is one of the key crucial uh, components into it, right? Um, so I don't think we have a lot of talents or you know skilled people to be able and understand this kind of infrastructure yet. So that's why I think it's very good starting point that, that um, right now we are the research uh, uh, institute in a way that we are trying to find out how can we make this infrastructure more efficient, right? And then we will translate or even, you know, transfer all those knowledge mm -hmm. to the industries because we are not, you know, we are not going to be become a provider. We are not going to become mm -hmm. a provider, right? So if you look at like five, ten years ago, we are not have a lot of cloud solution, right? Because yes. back then we have a lot of cloud provider. Right, so they are building, building people so that now we have more cloud providers. Um, it's easier to use, right? So people come and use cloud services more and more, right? Similarly, right now we want to have like, you know, eventually we even see in this kind of infrastructure, like startup or within small companies, they don't have to have their own, right? It mm -hmm. can be like a cloud based solution as well. Well, but because the hardware wise or you know the system wise it might be different from whatever you know the cloud based which is a cpu based uh, kind of infrastructure this one is more or less like a give you very intensive in kind of infrastructure so i think that will will very you know going the same way so if we start you know um building up uh, the strength in terms of building the skill people and even the knowledge how to uh, even provision or how how to run those um, GPU tasks, um, GPU based tasks, or you know AI oriented tasks um, well on this kind of infrastructure. Um, we are really, really hope that you know uh, the different cloud providers, uh, you know, in Thailand can come and take those knowledge and go and provide more, right? Because the more is available, the more benefit the students, um, you know, um, even the the startup can try it out right because you know they don't have to put a lot of investment on the day one they just you know pay for the services right and um right now i think we are working with the uh, tcc technologies um to you know uh, putting up this infrastructure as well so but like i said we are the research institute we are producing all the knowledge and we try to learn the best out of it for you know this current infrastructure and um, we want to see more and more people coming in and trying to provide this sort of uh, the, the ai based uh, service services right uh, more to the people yeah because the better it is the cheaper it is i think my students will benefit much more because they have choice right and uh, startup as well yeah Okay, so you are happy to collaborate with many technology companies and open for them, like even AI providers also, yeah. to yeah. try to move forward the our country right, yeah. in terms yeah. of AI. And Dr. Ko, what's the next big things, a wow project to come out of this lab? Mm -hmm. I think wow is the very subjective. <laughs> Thanks, right? Wow for me. Um, 
when I look at infrastructure, this infrastructure, I would say wow, because you know, <laughs> um, we never have this kind of capability before. Um, even like I said, I want to build, if you want to build a real model and it's really complex, right? Um, sometimes our small GP card don't even hold it, right? So we have no way to go forward. Um, now we have this kind of big machine, no more those kind of limitation, right? But I would say, yeah, you cannot grow to a certain extent that the machine has, but it's still, it's now the selling is really raised up high, right? Um, that, that's why we got really excited on this infrastructure. And since those infrastructure is with us, so now we can really, really study. We can really do a lot of research how to use it or you know increase the performance or squeeze it out every single bit of it right um that is more on the system side of it because i'm come from that side of all the um, research so that's why i get really excited and the other way that um um that made me excited is that um there are other projects that are ongoing with uh, and it's supported by uh, uh, ministry of uh, education and um, science and innovation as well so that one we are doing on the speech recognition so we are thinking that we're going to open up that data the one that we collected as well so we want to focus that like focus it in thai languages um, when they said thai languages including a lot of dialects that we have um, why why we are going that way right i think i, I got inspired by my kids and my mom because uh -huh. this kids my kids are only like five years old um he cannot read very well yet and he cannot write very well yet either but he can order things okay <laughs> he can order alexa if you know alexa is um you know these assistants that created the virtual assistant created by uh, amazon right um he, he can order Alexa to do things for him um, <laughs> by just using his voice. And, um, and Google is, you know, have the, the Google Assistant as well. You uh -huh. can use your voice as a Thai language, right? Order it to, you know, call people and do things like that. And that is make technologies to be more inclusive to me. Because right now, um, you know, some people said technologies kind of make things like, you know, you wide up classes, like, you know, people that I know things, right? I in another class and some people doesn't know that technical details, there will be another class, right? They said they make the gap wider. But to me, there are technologies that can reduce those gap, right? And this is one of the technologies that I see. So because when we are born, we learn how to say things and order stuff, right? Without we, you know, before we even start writing or reading things. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a natural way to, to use technology for you know people and i want technologies to benefit like many 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 people so i think this is one of the um, important interface uh, to, to develop and if you look at thai language um, you know we are a small country so that's why not many people invest to collect the data and you know build those model we are not really use english right it's the first language either so that's why i think it, it's up to us to really do this for ourselves, right? If we can collect those data and build those model, uh, yeah, we are going to be the one who benefit from that. And um, so, in this projects, we are going to collect a lot of dialects um, in the countries. Mm -hmm. So I think um, like a tree from the south, tree from the northeastern, and tree dialects from the north as well. So I think it's it's amazed me because um, I can I can really say like uh, you know regular Thai. Um, uh -huh. And in this project, I I learn uh, different languages. Um, I still don't understand when they say things, so we have no way to to even verify whether what is what does it mean, right? Some of the language is is pretty uh, different from what we said, like you know, in central. Mm -hmm. So, and this project we collaborating with um, a lot of universities in Thailand, like Jilalongkorn Universities, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sprint, Songkhana Karin uh, University universities, um, content universities, because we have to get the data from around the countries. So um, we really hope that um, 
you know, once we get the data, we can build a model to recognize the, the, the voice of the people and become a good interface to include more people and can use whatever service that we have, right? So um, yeah, this is a starting project. Um, we hope that if more and more people can help contribute to the data, now you're going to have a big corpus of open data and who knows, right? I will open this, this thing up and, you know, have people, have the student to come and work with it. We might get the smaller model to recognize the, the voice and it might be embedded on your mobile, right? And whatever app that you use, they can just include this model and you can just speak to it, right? In your own languages, you can, you know, even like, wow, is on to it, right? Uh -huh. so, so I think it is really, really good because technology is to be a barrier. I want technology to ease how we live, right? So I think this is one of the things that um, I get excited and I want, really want to see how far it can go. But like I said, it's going to come back to every one of us to help out on contributing it as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. OK, I, I like that idea, the automated speech recognition for Thai, right? Yeah, I, I, I agree that it should impact many parts of our countries and also children and senior citizens also can use it. Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, Dr. Dr. Ko, uh, this is my last question. Any suggestion of how to accelerate AI within organization and what they have to plan prepare for or watch out? So I think to accelerate it, I think we we need a lot of correlations and understanding from every single layers, okay? Um, because if you don't understand, you wouldn't support it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like for example, um, sometimes we collect the data. Um, we are even saying, oh, this is our properties. If you open it, you kind of lose it, right? But sometimes I would say contributing out to the public, you might benefit more than you thought, right? Um, just like Google, you, you, you can go and look at those example. They, um, they didn't open every single thing, okay? They still have their 300 million images with them, okay? But mm -hmm. they contribute like 14 million images out, right? And that is very really good starting point. And you are the one who get a chance to sorting out people. And you even get, sometimes you get even the better ideas because when you open up, who knows what you're going to get, right? Um, but if you just lock it into just your communities or, you know, your companies or your organization, that's all you get. That's all you know, right? So, so I think um, it would be a very fine line in terms of uh, where to work, but I would encourage every one of them to, you know, considering um, open up uh, the data and um, contribute it out, right? In a way that you feel comfortable, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I also would like to, to um, love to have, you know, the business people to learn and um, understand more in terms of the potential of uh, AI technologies. Um, because without doing that, uh, maybe it's hard going to get the support, right? And understanding, because if you look at AI, there's still work in progress in a way. You still don't get the general AI yet. It will be like 30, 40 years from now, maybe, right? Um, right now it's still very narrow kind of AI. So we train it for the specific task, right? And it still takes time in terms of tuning, collecting the data. That is the biggest um, challenge as well. Because in, when you collect the data, you have to label the data. That is labor intensive and time consuming. So that we need understanding from the business side of, as well. So um, if they understand, now they, they will give the support, right? And the time to nurture um, these technologies. And uh, I hope in the wrong run, AI, I, I don't see it. it's going to replace all the workers. I think it come and help you work better. Mm -hmm. And you just move people to where that machine is not good yet, right? And you've got people to work on it instead. So then we can focus on the task that matters. And, uh, you know, only people can do better. So um, that that is, um, yeah, I, I would love to see that, that 
I want them to be prepared, right? Um, in terms of the business, um, seeing the AI potential, and um, you know, give time and support to to those work. Okay, um, and I think it's good investment, and um, and I don't want you to be alone either. Like let's say if you are companies, you are business. Normally, I I understand that. Normally, you have your daily or operation tasks that you have to focus day to day anyway, right? So I, I would suggest you to find a good collaborators, you know, so that you don't have to do everything yourself because time is limited, right? You have only 24 hours per day and you have to sleep and eat too. So mm -hmm. I think find a good collaborators would make a long way, okay? Like, for example, here, um, we work with a different um, companies, big company as well, you know, and um, they they good at their business, right? And we are good at technical. We are good at fighting or, you know, um, even investigating a new or leading technologies, right? So that, that is a complementing each other because each one of you, you have your own strengths and you come together and with a good um, business vision and direction, now we can push the technologies to benefit those directions, right? Not just doing things that people may not care, right? But for this one, eventually, you know, we will reach the goal. We will go to that, you know, uh, maybe we, this technology can push uh, Thai uh, companies to the leading, you know, leading position, right? In order to go to the leading position, that means you have to open up and take risk. Because if you do things as you know other people's doing, how could you be a leader? Because someone else already do it, right? You are not a leader, mm -hmm. you just follow, right? Follow them. But if you want to start to doing something and you have the goal in mind that you want to be a leader at some of the market, at some of the business, meaning that you have to have you know this kind of risk that you have to absorb, right? But you don't have to do that alone, right? go and have a partner with someone that they know this thing better than you or you know they have more time to spend and absorb those risks right make the risk smaller you know because they know technical better because you know it's their view of doing things so i think by having a good partner they could you know going uh, more really steady and you know more um, the chance that going to success is going to be a lot better yeah mm. so the you recommend business to strike balance and may open up more work together for faster result and they can also work with cmkr also right yeah yeah i would love to because i want to see one i think one of my prize to see my work really get used in the real situation right like you know in the business i think yeah. that is the of the engineers we want to see this thing is deployed and using it i don't want to see it on the shelf right so <laughs> so that's, that's what we be happy when we see it that oh it's actually running right and uh, the challenge that we solve is real and every time that we solve thing actually we keep pushing the edge every single time because people when they said when they don't really actually apply and use it they think oh everything is possible but when you start doing it and applying it, I was like, oh, this is really pushing. It's like now you are on the edge of whatever is existing can do, right? And then make it challenging and that make it exciting for like for, for, for me or for our team, right? As a researcher. Okay. And this is Dr. Arathai Sampet. We wish you tons of success, especially in driving national data platform for AI. Thank you so much for your kind presence today. Ha, let's go. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Ha, sawadee ka. Thanks all the audience for being with us. And this is Open Talk program under Open Tech Technology Challenge Platform, powered by TCC Technology Group. If you like us, don't forget to click like and subscribe to TCC Technology YouTube channel. See you in our next open talk. สวัสดีค่ะ